The point of this talk really was in those photographs you were watching. So I'm going to center on architecture tonight. But it's really just to encourage all of you to, if you already do this, to do it more. If you don't do it, when you leave tonight, just to look around and just, just see the mathematics around us. And then just see it everywhere and feel it in your heart. Uh, what she was talking about, but about me walking around, I always have my camera with me and I'm always looking for math. It drives my spouse crazy because when we're out for a walk, I mean, now we're at the point now where she just keeps walking. And, uh, you know, but I always catch up with her. But I just, I, you know, there's something I need to take a picture of. But um, I've been very lucky the last um, three years, I've traveled over into the um, UAE and to the Arab Emirates. It's a part of the world that I never knew much about. And um, I've done some work at the American Community School. It's an international school. They've had me out to the school, uh, I guess it's been six times now, where I go in and teach lessons, work with teachers, and work with the staff and the administration. And I've also done similar work in Dubai uh, with the school there. And for me, it's just been really, really powerful for me to learn more about that part of the world. Wherever I go, I try and learn more about teaching and to improve my practice, you know, as well. But uh, for many of you, this may be a part of the world that's new to you as well and uh, that you may not know much about. Um, there's a booming economy there. Uh, it's very oil dependent and dependent. Well, Dubai is more financial. Um, it's interesting to ask whether it's sustainable, you know, the type of growth they've had, but it's just been huge. And you see it in the buildings. And I've gone for walks in both of these countries and I've just been shocked at some of the buildings I've seen. So tonight, I wanna just give you a little tour of uh, some of the buildings there. Uh, but before I do, you know, no matter what grade level you teach, if you look at buildings, just go online and just type in buildings. Type in tall buildings and just look at the photographs and start to think about the mathematics that you teach because there's lots there, the design, the shapes that are used. Uh, one great question you can ask students, this is at a particular age, is if I told you that a building had 65 stories, could you tell me the height of the building? And, and if you can't do that right now, so what would you need to know? What would you need to do in order to answer that question? So what do you think? What, what would you need to go do in order to answer that question? So the fundamental question is, there's a building that's 65 stories tall. What's the height of the building? What, what could you do? Do you have any thoughts? <laughs> so measure each floor, right? So that would be useful, wouldn't it, right? If you knew, you know, how tall each story was. I, I asked my teacher candidates this just the other day when I was in class with them. And I got a range of responses from them. But the fundamental one that they gave me was that we need some data. So, you know, if, if we went online and picked a whole bunch of buildings, we could collect some data, and we could look at a whole bunch of buildings of different heights, and look at of, of different stories and different heights, and make a scatter plot. Does it make sense to you that the graph is gonna look something like this? Like the more stories, the higher the building, right? So you could look at the trend, and you could come up with some information from that. Um, some of my teacher candidates started to actually delve deeper. And they said, well, what do you mean by the height of a building? What is that? It turns out that there's five different definitions of the height of a building. There's all kinds of different definitions. If you go to the Council of Tall Buildings, it's an organization, you'll see that they have all these different definitions there. Anyway, it, it turns out that if you do go online and take a look, there's actually some pretty amazing things that happen. Um, I'm just going to get... Uh, need to be able to read here. Um, it turns out that if you go online and start to answer this question with your students, it gets a bit complicated. Because when you start to collect some data about buildings, you'll find that there's different kinds of buildings. So if you look at office tall buildings, there's a definition of that. It turns out there's a formula. And it's not, you know, it's not exact, but generally speaking, 
you can find the height of a building if you know the number of stories. You multiply 3.9 times S, number of stories, you add 11.7, and you add 3.9 times S divided by 20. What a great question for students in grades 7, 8, and up to ask, where did this come from? You know, can you read this information and figure out where this formula came from? You're going to have this PowerPoint file, so you can look at this later. But it turns out the S divided by 20 is because for office tall buildings, generally speaking, every 20th floor, you have an equipment floor. There's an extra floor. They may be clumped together, but generally 20 floors requires an extra floor. That's why there's the S divided by 20. But it's interesting, like why is it 3.9 times S? Why is it 11.7? I mean, there's all kinds of mathematics involved in this. So you can delve into this, but that formula is something that you could do a lot with your students. This would be more middle school and high school. Um, you know, you could ask students to identify the independent and dependent variables. Uh, you could ask them a question. Uh, if um, a building has 80 stories, what's the height? So you substitute in the number 80 into the formula and work out the height. These would be standard math questions that we ask anyway. The beautiful thing here is that there's a context. You know, it isn't just Y's and X's that have, you know, no meaning. Um, you could reverse the question and say, there's a building that's 700 meters tall. How many stories has that building? You know, in this case, you'd be solving for S. You could also ask students to simplify the equation, you know, to write it in a different form. I would say in our curriculum, historically, especially middle school and high school, we've really been obsessed with this kind of stuff, simplifying things this way. And I think one of the things that's missing is that we haven't had a purpose. You know, students I don't think have, have understood why are we simplifying it? And a really good question is why would you do this? Like why, why would you do that simplification? For me, when I look at the equation at the top, it speaks to me. Like the S divided by 20 tells me something. You know, that every 20th floor, there's a mechanical floor. Why would you want to ruin the formula and simplify it? So here's a question for you. Why would you do this? What would the purpose of this be, of the simplification? Any thoughts? Is there any ideas? To calculate it? Absolutely. Right, the bottom formula might be easier to use if you were going to do some calculations. Um, or if you're going to make a graph. Or if you're going to solve for S. So I'm not knocking the simplification. I think just what's been missing is that we haven't talked about the purpose of different forms. Like why is one form of an equation better than another form? Um, when I was in school, my teachers all the time had us reduce fractions. Like, we would take 20 over 100 and we'd reduce it. And, you know, when you think about it, why would you do that? Like, 20 over 100 is beautiful. It's 20%. You know, it speaks to you. You know, 1 over 5 is also nice, too. But, you know, th this bent we've been on of always simplifying for no reason, I think is not a good thing. I think we have to think about why we're simplifying it and what does one form tell us that another form doesn't. Anyway, if you do go to this uh, website, um, and it's all in the PowerPoint, you'll find that there's actually other kinds of buildings. There are residential tall buildings. And in this case, you divide by 30. Uh, you need mechanical floors every 30 floors, not every 20. So there's other formulas like that. There are mixed-use tall buildings, and it's a different formula. Um, this one is uh, S divided by 25. So if you go online and start to look for data, something very simple, just the number of stories in a building and the height, you're going to uncover all kinds of stuff. And when you start to look at the buildings, look at the corner offices. Look at the geometry of the building. You know, have they deliberately designed the buildings so that there's more corner offices in the building? Or is it a straight box? Go to Google Earth and look down at the buildings. Look at the floor plan. There's all sorts of things you can do at different grade levels with buildings. Uh, whether they're tall or short, you know, it doesn't matter. 
Janine, I just wanted to, uh, to share that with you just at the beginning because you could do that with any difference anywhere in the world. Tonight what I wanted to do was just focus in Abu Dhabi. Um, this is actually a remarkable place because it, um, a, a lot of what is there was desert at one point. It's been built up. Uh, the economy, as I said, is just booming. And when you, when you travel there, you just see buildings that are just wow. I mean, just gorgeous designs. Like this one here, it, it's kind of a trick of the eye. You know, they've tried to make this look as if it's a wavy building, um, you know, by the design. Um, this is the building right here coming up. This is one of my favorites. What a beautiful design. You know, the Islamic influence there with the art. Um, gorgeous. You know, what shapes do you see? The high school teachers could try to model uh, the curves. You know, are they parabolas? Are they ellipses? What are they? Uh, the area of the glass. There's all sorts of questions that one could ask here. Um, the, um, this building right here, I'll just come back. Um, what's the floor plan look like? Right, if you lived in this building, what would your apartment look like? How would you find, you know, the area? You know, it's not a straight box where you do length times width and maybe adding in the bathroom and other rooms and stuff like that and taking away the closets, but beautiful. So when you start to look online, you'll find buildings like this all over the world. But um, those two are, are some of my favorites there. You'll see a building like this in Vancouver, and there's all sorts of questions you can ask about the surface area. You know, if that's a spherical cap, a hemisphere, or part of a hemisphere, what's the surface area? How many pieces of glass are there? Lots of things that you could ask. These buildings in Abu Dhabi, uh, I've been told that there's actually a secret code, that there's something about the colors here, and that there's something in code, and I've, I've not found out what it is. No, nobody seems to know, but apparently there's something to that building. Uh, every time I walk by these buildings, I'm trying to figure out what the code is. Um, now, I'm going to use some really strong adjectives here. So, because there are buildings in Abu Dhabi and Dubai as well, these are strong words, astonishing, astounding, breathtaking, uh, spectacular, startling, striking. So I'm going to show you some of these buildings, and uh, we'll see if you agree with me. So there's a building called the World Trade Center. Um, these there's actually a pair of buildings, and these are in the downtown area. They were actually going to be in another area of Abu Dhabi, but they put them here. That's what they look like. Have you ever seen a building like this? Like just stunning. It's like a it's like a cylinder going up where they shaved it off, but it's not a cylinder. Um, how would you find the surface area of that? Um, you know, perhaps one way of doing this would be to take that, you know, a picture like this and put it on graph paper and have students count the number of, you know, squares. But what an unusual design. This building is 100 stories tall, um, this particular building. And this other one beside it is 70 stories tall. Um, just stunning. You know, why would they shave it that way? What is the purpose of, of the design? But just really unusual buildings, uh, both of these. Um, the person who won the trip to San Francisco when they're at the NCTM conference, they must go to the Museum of Modern Art because it's like the buildings in Abu Dhabi, but it's just a cylinder where it's been shaved and it has an elliptical cross section. And a number of years ago at the 1999 NCTM annual when it was in San Francisco, I did a math trail in this museum. Uh, the museum was absolutely wonderful. They gave me access to the museum and I had hundreds of teachers in the building and we did a math trail there. And I field tested it with students from San Francisco, uh, from an inner city high school in San Francisco. And these kids are from the Nueva School uh, in San Francisco. And they were in front of the building with pieces of styrofoam cutting it at different angles. And these were grade six, seven, eight students who were measuring the surface area. They didn't know anything about uh, ellipses or anything like that. They were using graph paper to do this. And uh, the teacher in the picture here is David Lewis. And oh my goodness, I learned so much from him. Like he was light years. I mean, this is back in 1999. He was doing all kinds of stuff with talking and discourse and 
things in his classroom. He was like light years ahead of where everybody else seemed to be. Um, the, I, I write a column for the NCTM called The Mathematical Lens. And uh, my co-editor and I wrote a column about that building, the museum. So in the Dropbox folder, I'm going to give you access to a folder. You'll have the column. So you can look at it, and there'll be some more mathematics for you there. The Capitol Gate is another building in Abu Dhabi. Um, this building you see when you're coming in from the airport. I know it may be hard for you to read this screen, but if you can see the numbers, is there anything in the screen that jumps out at you? Is there any number that, that is intriguing you? Anything at all? The witch? The overhang, yes. The incline? This building is shocking. It actually leans more than the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's startling. This building leans at an 18 degree angle. Uh, it's, it's just like, how would you even build a building like this? That, you know, how does it stay up? What I'm hoping to do for students by making connections to buildings and architecture is maybe opening up their minds to careers. You know, maybe this could be a career for them to work for an architectural firm or, or work for people who, you know, who work for the firm um, and be interested in design and architecture. But this building is just a shocker. I took this building, I stood right up against the building, and I walked away from the building, and I kept looking up, and I stopped when I was right at the edge of the building. And then I paced it off, and it was about 10 meters. So the building overhangs. You can walk 10 meters, and you're still looking up at the building. There's some interesting trigonometry here, you know, that teachers use here. Um, you know, the angle of the building, how far I walked, um, the number of glass panels, how long would it take to clean the building? I mean, there's, right, there's a lot of questions you could ask about the building, not just about the height of the building. There's lots of things. That's taken at ground level with all these beautiful triangles. What kind of triangles are they? How many triangles do you see? Right, and I'm talking about the bigger triangles, right, like putting triangles together. There's lots of questions you could ask, but what an unusual building. My last trip there, the principal of the school took me out to dinner here. There's a restaurant on the 18th floor, and the restaurant is called 18 Degrees. And, you know, I don't even remember what I ate because I just spent the whole meal taking photographs. You know, I was leaning over the balcony, and I was taking pictures. I was trying to steal the menu. Um, you know, they just would not give me a menu. You know, I just, I don't know what it was. But um, anyway, it was a nice evening. But I was more into the name of the building, 18 Degrees because of the lean. But um, there's also this headquarters for the phone company. I, I just, I really like the logo of the building. But what I really like is the building itself because there's a giant golf ball on top of the building. And it's just this huge ball. There's actually two buildings side by side. And there's this very graceful, beautiful curve at the top of the building. My first trip there, I went into the building and I asked a security guard uh, what this was for. Like, why do you have that on the top of the building? Why is there a golf ball? And the security guard said, what are you talking about? And so I, I took him out front and I said, like this. He says, when did they put that there? <laughs> you know? And um, it's, you know something, it's actually one of the reasons why I do this. Because I don't think that as a whole, we slow down enough that we look around at our surroundings that we stop to see things. You know, this fellow had been working in this building for years and didn't know this thing was up there, you know, in the building. So anyway, then he's asking me, like, well, what do you think it's for? And I said, well, like, I don't know. But there's certainly a lot of mathematics. You know, the number of hexagons, there's actually some pentagons as well, you know? The purpose of this, by the way, is they have some parabolic dishes inside. There's actually some satellite dishes in this. So they wanted to make it a beautiful building where they would hide the satellite dishes. So that's the purpose of it. But uh, it's very beautiful. Um, there's also this um, um, other building. This is actually an apartment building. 
that just the windows, the shapes of the windows, the pattern. For young children, what patterns do you see in these shapes? You know, what, what have they done here? Is it all just random? Or is there some sort of pattern to these unusual shapes? For the high school teachers, they could try to fit a curve, you know, to the entrance of this. Um, I put it into Geometry Sketchpad and found that there was a beautiful parabola that fitted quite well, you know, the front of the building. How much glass is there? You know, what's the surface area? There's all sorts of questions. I love this building because at night, they light it up. And uh, when you drive this build by this building, this is what you see. Is that gorgeous? They have this running light show. So I've actually stood on the side of an expressway taking this beautiful video of the lights changing and looking at the pattern, the pattern in the colors that come up. Um, it's just beautiful. So, I mean, these happen to be in Abu Dhabi, but, like, you could look anywhere. Just pick a city, put, look for buildings in it, and look for buildings in wherever you're at, you know, wherever you're looking. And you'll find, you may not find buildings quite as stunning as some of these, but, you know, you'll find a number of them, but it's just beautiful. These are the Etihad Towers, and um, I've watched these buildings being built, and... Um, are just absolutely gorgeous, very beautiful curves uh, that they built. Um, these movies, uh, these buildings uh, are in a movie that recently came out called The Fast and Furious. Do you know why? Have any of you seen this movie? Very few of you? Well, maybe that says something about the movie. Um, it's not the kind of movie I would see, but, but I'm going to see this one because it turns out in the movie, there is a car up on like the 50th floor. Don't ask why the car is there. It, it, you know. But anyway, there's a reason. But there's a car up there, and it actually blasts out of the side of the building, and it blasts into another building beside it because they're trying to get away. So there's this, there's this stunt in the film where this happens. Anyway, it turns out when I was in Abu Dhabi in March, I opened up the national newspaper, and I was actually sitting outside of the hotel looking at these buildings, and I found this article that just knocked me over. Is they actually did the math. They actually tried to see if the stunt would really work. Could you really do this? This will be in the Dropbox folder for you. It'll be in the PowerPoint file. But for those of you particularly that teach quadratics, this will be a really nice one for you to use because it's a real example, you know, of, of something. And, and it's from popular culture. And quite frankly, there's probably more of your students who have seen the film than you have. You know, I think there's a bit of an age factor here, um, you know, as well. I also think that there's something about males and females as well. Somebody was telling me that this film has attracted a lot of males. I don't know what's wrong with me. But anyway, it's just not, not as I said, the kind of films I... I generally see. By the way, speaking of movies, um, we have a film festival in Hamilton right now, and I have just seen two films that just absolutely blew me away. One of them was called Amy, about Amy Winehouse. I was so turned off by her and her story, but when I saw the movie, I just felt so much compassion for her. Um, they had a, a panel afterwards. They had a lot of psychiatrists at McMaster University, and they had a full panel where we discussed mental health issues. And uh, it was a remarkable story. And two nights ago, I saw Love and Mercy, all about Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys, another person who had a lot of difficulties in his life. And uh, two amazing films. And there was a panel for that as well. But uh, I mean, those are the kind of movies that I'm usually in. Anyway. But uh, this building, the Etihad Towers, there's actually a really nice question you could ask. How far can you see to the horizon? So what's the distance that you can see? And if you go home and Google this, distance to horizon, you'll find that there's a lot of formulas for this. So you can go to the top of the CN Tower, you can work out the formula, and, and you'll know how far you can see. Turns out in Toronto, you can see Niagara Falls, you know, the mist from that height. Um, 
So it's a great question, how far can you see? Um, the Globe and Mail, some years ago, had this column called Ask a Journalist. So somebody wrote in a question that I've often wondered, uh, why do tall guys get more dates? And this journalist wrote back and said, well, they can see farther. You know, they've got an edge over somebody short like me. So, uh, but it, it turned out in the article, they actually gave in this tongue-in-cheek answer, they gave this beautiful formula. And, and it turns out, you could look at this later on, the way the formula is stated is ambiguous. The journalist did not do a good job of, of being clear about the formula. You know, it says multiply your height in meters by 10, that's fine. Add on a third, well, a third, like, a third, like a third, like one over three? Or it's, it's not ambiguous. So a good question for your students would be, what, what is the formula? And they've got some data there, so you could try both versions, you know, and see which one's correct. It turns out the simplification is take the square root of your height and multiply it by 3.65. And that'll give you a ballpark figure of how far you can see. But there's all sorts of really nice mathematics that you can do with this. Um, I have another column that I'll put in the Dropbox folder for you. Um, it's all about Taipei 101, one of my favorite buildings. And I have a whole bunch of questions about how far you can see. And it's particular to that building. So you can take a look at that column later, and there's lots of math questions for you. Um, the Albahar Towers. These are some other buildings that uh, I've seen in Abu Dhabi. And these two buildings, I was out for a long walk. I love walking. It's a passion of mine. As I said, I've always got my camera with me. I always have my running shoes with me. And I just love to walk. And in fact, the mathematical lens column this month is celebrating the 100th issue. So last January, my co-editor and I, we started on First Avenue and First Street in New York City. And we walked 100 blocks to celebrate the column. And we took about 1,000 a 1, pictures. And the column this month is about that walk. So is next month. So is the next 10 years. You know, I'm just kidding. But the next two months are about the 100 block walk that we did. You know, it was about a five mile walk. But this particular walk, I had probably walked about eight or nine kilometers. I was far away from the school. And I saw these two buildings in the, the distance and I, I wondered, what are they? Are you intrigued? Like, why would you cover up a building? Why would you put something over? I just I couldn't figure out. So I got closer. And I got closer to the building. And I was intrigued by the roof. But I could kind of see these things. And I wondered, what is this? And then I got really close. And I just I couldn't believe what I was looking at. This building, that's what it looks like. These things open and close with the sunlight. This is an unbelievable building. It saves a ton of money in cooling costs. They have this shell around the building. And on half of the building, where the sun rises, it's protected in the morning. And I stood in front of this building watching all of these things open up. And I'm just flipping out because like I, like I can't believe this. Um, it's just a stunning building. I've gone back to visit this building a number of times, and I've gone into the lobby. I've, I, I often go and ask questions. I want to know about buildings. Uh, and I went in to try and get into the building. And nobody would let me in. Uh, but in March this year, the principal of the school, of the American Community School, found a parent whose kids were at the school who worked in this building. And I went and met him there, and he gave me access to the building. And I was in there for two or three hours, and it was just magical. I actually saw the inside of the building and how these things work. There's actually plungers, and it's like, a, it's like an umbrella. And these things open and close. It's just unbelievable. But no matter what grade level you teach, there's lots of questions you can ask about this. Um, you know, the shapes that you see, the hexagons, the triangles. Um, how long would it take to open and close 
Uh, there's all sorts of just you know, there's elementary questions. There's complicated questions uh, that you could ask here uh, about this building. And for those of you teaching high school, one of the fundamental questions is about the sunrise and sunset. So when this building was built, they were interested in the sunrise and the sunset. So I wrote a column, another column for the math teacher about this building. It'll be in the Dropbox folder for you. And my co-editor and I, we looked up some data. And I've done this with students as well. I've had them go online and find data. And we took the data and we fit some trig equations to it. You know, it's a real live example of where a trigonometric equation, um, you know, has some real meaning. Um, you know, and it's the sunrise sunset, but attached to something that means something um, to this building. But uh, just amazing. So that's one of my favorite buildings. I, I love the geometry of it, the, the innovation of the building, the shapes, and the fact that they actually made that. Now, I used some pretty strong adjectives at the beginning. These are the adjectives I used. Maybe you're nonplussed. Maybe the photographs I've shown you, you think, you know, like these are not buildings that, so maybe that's how you feel. Well, I have another building to show you. And if you don't feel this way after seeing this building, then I'll show you some pictures from Dubai, okay? Because like those buildings are like over the top. So you ready? This building, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Unbelievable. A 23-story building that's in the shape of a coin. It's affectionately called the coin building. It's fairly thin. It's just uh, unbelievable. I, I've stood in front of this building just looking at this and just wondering, like, how did they build this? How does it stand up? Why did they do it? Um, what is this about? Anyway, it turns out that I did manage to find people in the building who were interested in allowing me in. And I've taken students to this building a number of times. There's an architectural design teacher at the American Community School named Kanga. And she and I have taken students to this building. It's been an architectural design math field trip. And so we've gone inside the building. Uh, you'll see some of the kids in the upper left corner. We're actually up in the mechanical floor. We're on the 20 foot, 23rd floor of the building looking around. And um, over the years, the last two, three years, we've had a number of people give us tours of the building. We've had people involved in the architecture of the building, the design, um, come up to this floor and talk to us. And uh, the students have just loved this. So um, you may live in a small town where it may be difficult for you to do this kind of thing, you know, to actually visit the building. But if you can find a building that intrigues you or your students online, you could always reach out to the building and see if you can find somebody who you could maybe just talk with via Skype. You know, get information that way. So you might not be physically there, but you could still be there. Maybe have your students find a building that interests them, you know, so that, it, so that it's about them and it's not building you found, it's about buildings they found. And you know, tonight, if the buildings don't interest you, then fine. Pick something else. You saw all the pictures at the beginning. They were from Kuala Lumpur. You can do this anywhere. You can just take pictures. You can take pictures on a farm. Uh, I'm from farm country in Chatham, Ontario. And every time I'm, I'm visiting my uncles and aunts who are still farmers, I'm always with my camera and I'm always finding pictures on a farm. So it, it doesn't have to be here. It could be anywhere. Uh, where the pictures could come from. But this building, a really interesting question is the floor space. So this will be in the PowerPoint file for you. But as you go up, you get more floor space, right? They're cords of circles. So a really interesting thing for students to do would be to draw a circle, draw a bunch of cords, and measure the lengths of the cords with a ruler or the high school crowd could actually find the lengths of the cords. You know, you could do this at different grade levels and actually look at a circle and see how the cords change. Because this is a real live example 
where the chords are important. Um, it turns out what I did, and I've had students do, is we made a scatter plot. You could do this you know, with, with Excel. You could do it with an online app. I used a graphing calculator for this. You know, I put the data in, I set up the window, made the graph, and I looked at the graph, and I was like, whoa. And I found a quadratic regression to it, and I found this beautiful pattern, you know, that fits the data. But is it a problem? Like, is that really how the chords behave? I'll leave it to you to think about that. But it sure looks like it is here. But uh, just absolutely beautiful data. This data is actually from the architectural drawings from the building. It turns out in one of the visits there, I had been pestering somebody at the building for some drawings. And they said, it's all proprietary. You can't have it. But in one visit, the guy came over to me. I felt like we were doing a drug deal because he came over with an envelope. He went over into a corner with me. He says, I want you to just hold on to this for a minute. He's on the phone talking to somebody. And he's yakking away. And he, and he finally hung up and he said, you can have this. And you, 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 you have the information. So you can use this in whatever you, way you want. And it was all these architectural drawings for the building. And it turns out there were some surprises. Because when I started to look at the information he gave me, there was a really cool thing that happened. This involves the golden ratio. So this was deliberately designed with a pentagram. That's the pentagram. Where this building sits, you know, you, you can't have a building sitting on the coin, right? You know, it's going to topple over. So there's a cord it's sitting on, but it's actually the points of a pentagram where it's sitting. And the golden ratio is just crawling all over this. There's just so much geometry in this building. So it was just such a, a gorgeous thing to see. Um, so anyway, I uncovered that from it and found that it was deliberate. It turns out that there were some reasons why they chose the golden ratio. Um, the serenity of it, the peacefulness, the aesthetic. There were lots of reasons why they, they had picked that. But um, I get different grade levels that you teach. You may be able to do something with this building. And I think your students will really love this. By the way, the pentagram, a number of years ago, this mathematical lens column that I write, I've, over the years I've been getting teachers like you submitting material, which we love. Because we really wanted this column not to be our column, but everybody's column. So we've had teachers from all over the place submitting material, and I hope some of you might as well. You can go into the Dropbox folder, see what we've done, what other people have done, and maybe send me something for the column. But anyway, back in 2008, this math teacher from Georgia wrote to me, and he says, I have this picture I found online, and I'd like to use it in one of the columns. And I wrote Gunnam back, and I said, you know, it's OK, but we're kind of hoping that people go outside with their cameras and look around. I mean, looking around in the internet is fine, too. But so anyway, he, about half a year later, he wrote me back, and he sent me his picture. And I almost fell off my chair, because it was a pentagram just like on that building, but created by dancers. It was this beautiful picture. And he wrote an entire column based in the image you're looking at right now. There's geometry all over the place. There's trigonometry. There's flags of countries around the world. You're going to love this column. So it, I'll, I have it in the Dropbox folder already for you. It, this is my favorite column of all of them, of all the 100 columns. It just absolutely blew me away. Now, when I wrote this column, he wrote it, when I edited it, a dear friend of mine in New York City, Amanda Michelle's, I happened to see her, and I showed her the initial work. She looked at it, and she said, tomorrow morning, I'm going to have my students do this. So she actually got her middle school students to do this. And then they went crazy. These are five dancers. They got six dancers, seven, eight, nine, ten. They got up to 12 dancers, all crowded around making these star polygons, they're called. And in the column, you'll see some of the pictures of her students in there as well. It's just amazing. So um, 
Anyway, there's some really nice mathematics there. There's a side view of the building looking at it. It's pretty magical, isn't it? Um, I look at this picture and I have fond memories because the students went back to the school with the teacher in the van and I stayed behind because I just wanted to sit in front of this building and watch the sunset. So the sunset, I had this beautiful moment. I'm looking at the sun, the round sun. I'm looking at the round building. It was peaceful. It was just one of the one of the sweetest moments I've had in my life sitting here. And then it was terror. This was like eight o'clock at night. And I'm looking around thinking, like everybody's gone home. <laughs> this building is still in a bit of an isolated area. There's not a lot around it. There's no cabs around. So I ended up actually having to walk about two miles to get a cab. Um, you know, I was starting to really wonder because the school was like another eight miles away. You know, I, I figured at some point I was going to you know, find somebody who would drive me back to the hotel. But that wonderful moment kind of, you know, changed pretty dramatically uh, overall. Um, you know, maybe I'll just show you a few pictures from Dubai as well. Um, the buildings there are probably, take the buildings in Abu Dhabi and multiply them by a thousand. Um, here's a few images for you. You'll just see curved buildings, weird shapes that are just all over the map. You'll find a building like this that is actually twisted. This building twists as it's going up. And when you stand at the base and look at it, that's what it looks like. I've tried to get into this building. I've talked to people at the front desk. None of the tenants have wanted me to, you know, I guess they're suspicious of me, you know, this Canadian guy, you know, but uh, just an amazing building. But there's also buildings like this where, you know, they're connected by a cylinder. It's a walkway. Can you imagine walking in the cylinder? You know, it'd be rather tricky to walk on, wouldn't it? It turns out that there's a horizontal floor, as you can probably imagine. But um, this is actually one of my favorite buildings. Um, do any of you know what this is? Yes, it's the ski hill. So in Dubai, you can actually go skiing. So uh, I went into this building. It's a massive building, and I went up the chairlift. And I went all the way up the chairlift. It goes way, way up. And I'm taking pictures everywhere. And then I came down in the chairlift. And uh, <laughs> just like, I have to tell you that I was sitting in there wondering, like, why would you do this? You know? And I think part of it, you know, is that one of the reasons you see some of these buildings is because there is a lot of money. And so they can do things like this. You know, I've been told that there is a spillover effect, that what they've learned from these buildings actually is coming in play in our buildings here, you know, with that. Um, it's been interesting going to both these countries. I, I, I must tell you that I also walk around wondering if the economy is sustainable. I wonder about our economy as well, quite frankly, whether our economy is sustainable when you look at how many jobs have gone, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sitting here wondering about both economies. I also wonder about who's building these buildings as well. So I, you know, it's an interesting question, who's building these? I see a lot of people from all over the world building these, and I, you know, I wonder about how they're being treated. So these are questions that I've tried to delve into when I'm there as well. So I'm actually, you know, doing a couple things. I'm admiring the buildings, enjoying them, I'm thinking mathematically, but I'm also trying to get under the fingernails of the country and to look at, you know, what's happening in the society and what's going on, you know, with them. The, um, Dropbox folder, there's a couple other buildings. Th this is the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalif. It is just, the geometry of this building is unbelievable. My last trip there, I went up to the 145th floor, and I was absolutely pumped. I was ready to take pictures of the distance to the horizon, because I've never been that high up. So I got permission to stay up there. They give you tours up there, but I'd arranged, they, they allowed me to stay up there for as long as I wanted. So I got up to the top and I looked out the window and it was dusty, it was cloudy. I couldn't see anything. So it was, yeah, it kind of, you know, anyway. 
The building on the left is actually a maze. There's this company that builds these buildings around the world, and it's an actual maze that you can solve on the side of the building. It's about 45 stories tall. And when you stand on the other side of the expressway, you can see the whole building and kind of trace it out with your fingers. Um, by the way, I have to tell you, I'm just thinking of some memories from this trip. The best time I've had in Dubai was I did a food trail earlier this year. And I went to about a dozen Indian restaurants in old Dubai in Mina Bazaar. And it was so cool because Farida, this young woman runs uh, Frying Pan Adventures, we really hit it off. Because I said, you know, I do math trails. I take people out and you know, I get them to see the math. She said, well, I take people out to s enjoy the food. So we were both competing with each other. You know, I was showing her the math. She was showing me the food. But it was a lovely trip. Um, if you want to download the materials from this, it's actually really easy. If you have a mobile device with you, you can just point it at it, and, uh, and you'll be directed to the website. If you don't, this will be easy for you to remember if you don't have a pen and paper handy. It's just RL, my initials, so Ron Lancaster, and it's just Abu Dhabi. And uh, if you just go to tinyurl.com and put that in, the PowerPoint file is there. I have all sorts of photographs, some background information about the buildings. I have some sketchpad files in there, some graphing calculator files. So there's a whole bunch of things in there that uh, you'll be able to use. You know, if this isn't your thing, using the buildings, I guess my hope is that you'll just leave tonight and just look around. Maybe while you're here in Whistler, just walk around the community here. I went for a walk this afternoon, and I found all kinds of mathematics in this community. And actually, I relived the moment, because I was here at this conference a number of years ago. And I was walking around taking pictures, and I ran into a dear friend of mine, Peter Saramaki. Peter was out taking photographs. So Peter and I sat together, and we showed each other our photographs. The ironic thing was we almost took all the same pictures. <laughs> we saw the same things, and there was this real connection between us, you know, of, of seeing the math. And that's what I hope you'll do, and I hope you'll have your students do this. Give them an assignment where they have to go online, go for a walk, look around, and find the math. Develop math questions based on, you know, what they found and then make it about them. Anyway, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference.